Hi guys, this is Matt. You're watching The Joy of Hacking. And today I thought we would do a short little video that shows some of the ways that I changed the Kali install so that it's a little bit different from what you might have at home if you're using the default settings. So I thought today would be a good day to do this video because Kali 2023.3 was just released about a week ago. And so if you haven't yet, go ahead and download that or update to it. I've downloaded a fresh copy of it here, and I've got it ready to go, so let's go ahead and go on up here and get logged into it. So the default username is Kali, and then we'll change this later, but for right now the default password is also Kali. So we'll log that in. And then I do a couple of things uh, in, a, in a couple different ways, but the first thing I usually do is come over here, over to my host computer, and then I drag up and drop in a little shell script that we're gonna run in a minute. But before we get to that, I do a couple of things manually in the Kali graphical interface because I'm sure these things could be automated too, but they're so simple that I haven't found it necessary to work on trying to automate them, so I just do them manually real quick. So the first thing I do is this GPU graph it bothers me a lot because I think it's very distracting. So if you like it or, you know, it provides value to you, that's completely fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But just as a personal preference, I like to get it out of there. So I right click on it, click remove, and then click remove again. Then I right click on the panel up here and go to panel, uh, panel preferences, unlock it, uncheck the lock panel then click on the edge here and drag it down and then lock it back in place. And that just makes it so that it's on the bottom, which is the same as my host, which is a Windows system. Then the next thing I do is go to my Kali start menu here and type in power and just hit enter, which should bring up the power manager. Come over to security and set the automatically lock the session to never and uncheck the lock screen when system is going to sleep. And that could be an important security function if you're in a shared environment, um, or especially if you're running the Kali on a, on a bare hardware. But in this case, neither of those things is true, so it just becomes an annoyance for me. So I just go ahead and turn that off. And then the next thing I do is come down here and just right click on the clock, click properties come up here and I just like to have my clock format almost the same but I like it to have the AM or PM so I don't get confused if it's day or night out and then I lastly open up a terminal and this is so small that you guys probably can't really even see it and I can't either so I go here and I go to file preferences and I change the font size to 14. Turn my num lock on, 14. Apply, okay. And that works pretty well for me. And then I usually come over and I just make this a little bit bigger for myself so that it's a little bit easier to work with. And then for you guys at home, I usually maximize that so that it's even bigger and then increase the font size a little bit more so that it's plenty big for you guys to see on your screens at home but that just about does it for my purposes and then when I close this out or I reopen it it'll be back to the 14 point font for if I'm gonna do something off video here but for you guys at home, we'll go ahead and leave it increased so that you can see the next part, which is that we're going to run that script that we dropped in. Before we do that, though, let's go ahead and take a look at it real quick. So we'll cat it out. And this is a pretty simple process, too, but these things are just much easier. I found because this is all easily done on the command line, it's much easier to just put it in a line by line script and just have the script run everything for us. So the first thing the script does is updates the app package cache so that if we install any new tools, that'll all be at the latest versions that are available. And then the next thing that it can do is do a full system upgrade because Kali is a rolling release 
So if you want, you can always keep it at the cutting edge. You don't have to wait for the quarterly uh, system releases. You can update it at any time to the latest and greatest of every single package that's available. I personally don't do that because I found that that tends to cause more problems than what it's worth. Um, but if you want to, and if that suits your purposes, you can always uncomment this and let that go in the initial install script. Then the next thing it does is it does install a couple of tools here. Um, GoBuster, RLWrap, and XClip, and I'm sure you guys have seen me use GoBuster at least before, and then the three of them together are just some things that I found that I commonly always want to have installed, and so I just do it manually here. And sometimes if I find myself installing a new tool after this on a common basis, then I'll go ahead and go into my script and add the new tool in there as well. Then I just have it run an apt auto remove to clean up any dependent packages that are no longer needed. Then we come down here and we regenerate the SSH host keys because the host keys that it ships with are going to be the same as every other uh, default Kali package um, because this is a, a virtual machine uh, package. So this will be the same at, on every single instance of that. So we want to change that so that ours is, is different than everyone else's out on the internet. So it moves the original host keys to a different folder, or different directory, I should say. And then it runs dpackage reconfigure to just generate those keys for us automatically. Then down here, it prints out the MD5 sums of the old keys and the new keys, uh, just to make sure that that did work correctly and they are different, kind of proves that to us. Then we come down here and change the password of the Kali user. And you can change the username or create a new user if you want, but I don't find it an issue to just leave the default Kali user, but change the password so that it's not also Kali. Then I change the time zone so that it's set to my time zone in US Pacific. Then I create and update the locate database because locate is just a little easier to use, I find, than uh, the actual find command. Um, a little faster and uh, more performant when you know the exact name of a file you're looking for, such as your rock you list. Which, speaking of, we next come down here and unzip that. And we just unzip it in place so that it will just sit there as rocku.txt. Um, Takes up a little bit more space, of course, but it's pretty hard to use when it's zipped up, so we just unzip it so it's all ready to go the next time we need to crack some passwords. All right, and then the last thing we're gonna do is come down here and add some configuration to our zshrc file. What this is gonna do is set it so that the shell will automatically append lines to its history file in real time instead of just on shell exit. And it also makes it so that when the shell does exit, it won't overwrite the history file and clobber it. And so functionally what that does is it sets it so that when you open a new shell in a new tab, it will have the lines of history from this currently running shell while this shell is still running. It also has a note here that it adds to the file that you can use the fc switch ri command at any time to incorporate the stored history into a running shell. And the reason that you might need to do that is because if you have both shells running concurrently and you type some commands in this shell, and then you come back here and you would try to access them from here, this shell won't have access to that history because it only pulled the history in from the file when the shell opened. But that's okay because if you just do a quick FC switch RI, command in here, it will pull in all that history from the file that this shell has been appending to, and then you're good to go. All right, and then moving forward, uh, that's it for our file, so we'll go ahead and run it now. And to do that, we are going to run it with sudo, because some of these commands in here require uh, root access to, to complete, um, so we'll just run the whole script with sudo. And oh, before we do that, we do need to, I believe, haven't done this yet. So we need to set our 
shell script to executable. And then we can go, whoops. We can go sudo Kali Linux initial changes.sh and run it. And our password is still Kali. So we'll get that going. And this takes a little bit to go through. Most of it, it doesn't prompt you for anything. It just goes on its own. Um, it will ask you for the password here in a second, and then it hangs for a second when it does the unzipping and the updating of the locate database. But other than that, it should be all good to go. And then when it's done, that's the end of your setup. And because this is a shell script, I just wanted to mention, you know, this is, this is pretty simple for my needs, but really your imagination is the limit with this because you could make this as crazy as you want, or you could even implement something like this in any other language you want, such as, as Python or something of that nature. But to get you started, I will have a link down in the description below for a download of this shell script and you can download this and use it on your own system or use it as a starting point to modify it for your own needs. And that should just about do it for today's video. So I'm going to let you go and set you loose on the world. I'll see you next time. Happy hacking.